This mod is the best way to show off that you're better than everyone. That's right, we're doing a PS5 RGB controller mod. Best part is, there's no soldering needed, it can be done in under an hour, and it costs less than $30. Stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be giving away this very controller to one of you guys. And be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing if you enjoy the video. And it starts with this, Extreme Rates DTF PS5 LED Kit. I was super excited when I found out they released this. I reached out to Extreme Rate and they were kind enough to sponsor this video. And this is my white DualSense controller that came with my launch PS5. It's fine, but I wanted to do this mod on something with a little bit more style. That's why I bought a brand new matte black DualSense controller. I bought this solely for this project, so if I mess up, Best Buy, I'm sorry, but you're getting returned to busted controller. All right, but first let's see what we get inside the kit. Opening the box, we're greeted with the LED wiring, which looks very different. A one-year warranty card, that's nice. Spare screws, along with a transparent D-pad, joysticks, buttons, and the tools you'll need to complete this project. I usually don't like these, but we'll see how far we can get with them this time. Alright, let's open up this brand new controller that we're going to sacrifice, uh, modify. My comments have been telling me that they fear this mod might be harder to do than the PS4 controller mod, but it's actually the opposite. This process is much simpler now. Okay, let's get started. First, we need to take off this joystick cover here. So we're going to grab our blue opening tool, then just jam it in between the seam. They're only held in by clips, so it's really easy to take out. All right. Just two more clips right next to the headphone jack. And it's out. As you can see, it's really easy to pop this thing off and back on again. Uh, there's actually a bunch of different colors you can replace this piece with. I'll link in the description if you find something that you like. All right, next are the bumper buttons. We're only removing the two buttons, so don't worry. You'll, you'll see why soon. See, unlike the PS4 controller that had the screws just exposed on the back of the controller, the DualSense controller has them hidden behind the bumpers and the feet of the controller. By the way, these are all the same size, so don't worry about getting them mixed up. Okay. There are two more clips that need to be unlatched. Uh, these won't click at all, so just pull them back until they're not touching the inside of the controller anymore. You can always bend them back in later. After that, there's nothing holding onto the back of the controller, so don't be afraid to pull it off. And we're in. This is the inside of your DualSense controller. It's pretty, right? Okay, time to start unplugging stuff. First, we disconnect the microphone and the headphone jack. Use tweezers if you need to, it, it definitely helped me a bit. The battery, surprisingly, isn't held in by anything this time around. How strange. Looks like Sony decided to just cheap out on the double-sided tape this generation.
Okay, so now do you see how the triggers are just one giant piece now? That's likely because of the new haptic triggers. Either way, we need to employ them. Now these are really firmly in there, so don't be afraid to be a little rough with them. Don't worry, they're into that. There's two screws holding in the frame, and after that, we can slowly lift out the motherboard. These joysticks have a really interesting history. Uh, they were originally marketed by Sony as undriftable. Two more screws holding in the frame, and after that, the whole controller finally starts to fall apart. We'll get to this part later, but for now, let's just focus on the buttons. Don't oh, shit. These buttons all have notches, so they can only go in one way. A little fun fact about the buttons on the DualSense, while the buttons like the triangle and the square have regular rounded buttons, the circle button is the only button that stays sloped to fit with the contour of the controller. Well, Extremer took note of this detail and replicated it so the buttons don't feel off. How's that for attention to detail? All right, the buttons are done. At this point, I'd recommend putting your old parts back in the box. You're not gonna wanna lose these. Okay, onto the wiring. Well, I really wouldn't call it wiring, honestly. It's, it's super duper simple. The joysticks just pop off with very little effort. So I'm going to try and explain how the wiring on the controller works. This paper thing is looped into the back of the controller. And the context of this ribbon is making contact with the motherboard here, which sends inputs back to the PS5. So what the spotted wiring is going to do is intercept those inputs so we can use them to adjust our RGB settings. I'll show you how this works later, don't worry. So we're going to bring the ribbon and loop it around the exact same way. Starting to make sense? Now there's little notches on the front of the controller, so that way it doesn't move around. With the PS4 mod, the wiring was super flimsy and it was hard to keep down, so I had to use double-sided tape to hold it down. Well, it seems they agreed it was a problem too. So now there's adhesive now on the side, thank, thank goodness. There's also less wiring in general now, which makes for a much easier install. After installing the joysticks, we're done. The mod is pretty much finished. Now it's just a matter of putting it all back together. Now, one thing I hate about some videos is that they take something apart and then they never show you how to put it back together. So I'm gonna be the change I wanna see in the world and show you how to put it all back together. After putting the front shell and the motherboard back together, we put back our two screws holding it all together. Now we plug back in the headphone jack 
the touchpad, and the haptic triggers. At this point, I'll plug in the microphone too. Okay, last step here. Everything falls onto these two wires. The first plug goes to the battery port. And the second plug goes to the battery. Oh man, it's looking great already. All right, now that the last four screws are in, all we need to do now is I'll, I'll call him back later. Uh, now all that's left is the joystick cover. I would angle it in there, push in, then down until you hear it click. And finally, the bumpers. And we're done. I'm going to be honest, it already looks really great right now, but let's go somewhere a little bit darker to really see how it came out. Okay, it's nighttime now. The mod's all hooked up. Now let me show you how to use it. All we do is hold up, right, and square for three seconds, and then the lights are going to turn on. Then you can use up and square for another three seconds, and the controller will start blinking. That's how you know you're in color changing mode. Then you can use the right button on the D-pad to show off what colors you want. There's eight different colors, plus a mode where they show off all the colors in a loop. Pick something you like, as one color is going to cover the entire controller. And once you find a nice color, holding up and square will exit you out of the menu. And there you go. A PS5 RGB controller mod that takes less than an hour to install and looks fantastic. A couple notes, there's no trigger lights on this mod unfortunately. I suspect that might be because of the complete redesign of the way that they've worked now due to the haptic triggers, but maybe one day they might be able to figure that out. Also, I realize that this mod kit doesn't have the ability to change the color of the individual areas on the controller, but I assume that's likely because of the price point. The battery life is alright thankfully too, only about an hour loss with the mod enabled, but worst case, you can always disable it if you like. Still, it looks really nice, and while I'd love to keep it with me, I'd love it even more to be able to give it to one of my subscribers, so here's what we're gonna do. Okay, first, this giveaway is completely ran by me. Though this video is sponsored, this has nothing to do with Extreme Rate. I paid for the controller, I'm paying for the shipping, so this is all me. I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can enter to win this exact controller. The contest is open from October 1st to October 31st, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. and is US only. Also, if you wanted to try this mod yourself, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to where you can buy this mod kit yourself. Finally, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you thought of this mod. Do you love it? Do you hate it? How does it look compared to the PS4 RGB controller mod? Did you watch the entirety of this video with absolutely zero intention of doing this yourself again? Really? Two times? Are you serious? Check out some more of my videos over here, and thanks for watching!